We confess together, holy God, we have put into the foolish past, grumbling against you, try to stand on our own, trusting in our own righteousness, and done justice. God said, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish. Again, though I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. Yet if you turn from your sin and do what is just and right, none of the sins that you have committed shall be remembered. As a call, an ordained servant of the word, I announce the forgiveness of sins to all of us in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have given us the promise of forgiveness and salvation through the urging of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. Help us to accept your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first lesson is from Ezekiel 33. We read responsibly. The word of the Lord came to me. So he was the son of man. Okay. I have made the watchman of the house of Israel. Whenever you hear the word from my mouth, you shall give them the morning for me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that the person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. And you, son of man, say to the house of Israel, Thus have you said, Surely our transgressions and our sins are upon us, and we rot away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, as I live, declares the Lord God, I am no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his wicked way and live. Turn back, turn back after me, O Jesus, or why do you die, O house of Israel? And you, son of man, say to your people, The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him when he transgresses, and as for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall by it when he turns from his wickedness, and the righteous shall not be able to live by his righteousness when he sins. Do I say to the righteous that he shall surely live? Yet if he trusts in his righteousness and does injustice, none of his righteous deeds shall be remembered, but in his injustice that he is God. Again, though I say to the wicked, he shall surely die. Yet if he turns from his sin and does what is just and right. If the wicked restores the flesh, gives back the gift of his take by God, and walks in the of his life, not doing injustice, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the sins that he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is just and right, he shall surely live. Yet your people say, the way of the Lord is not just. When he does not remain, he does not When the righteous turns from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. And when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is just and right, he shall live by this. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just, O house of Israel. I will judge each of you according to his ways. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 85. Revive us again to the choir master, a psalm of the sons of Korah. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You restored the of Jacob. You gave the iniquity of your people. You have covered all your sins. You withdraw all your wrath. You turn from your hot anger. Restore us again, O God of our salvation. And put away your indignation towards us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not revive us again? That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord. 
and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what, the, what God the Lord will speak. For he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to God. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet. Righteousness and peace can see them. Faithfulness springs up from the ground. And righteousness looks out from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him. And make his footsteps away. Our second lesson this morning is from 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and passed through the sea. And all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And all ate the same spiritual food. And all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of the spiritual dry that followed them and the rock of Christ. Nevertheless, with most of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. All these things took place at the same of the cross, that we may not desire to as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink, and rose up to life. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not compromise the death of the death, as some of them did, and they were destroyed by servants, and were born on the side of the dead, and were destroyed by the rest of the world. Now these things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our construction, on whom the end of ages has come. Therefore, for the living one who thinks that he stands to take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel is written in the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to you, O Lord. There were some present at that very time who told him about the Galilean, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he answered them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse than all other Galileans, because they saw him as his way? No one will tell you, but when you must repent, you will all likewise perish. For those who see him on the two towers, I will not kill him. Do you think that they were worse than all other Galileans? No, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. And he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. And he said to the vine dresser, And he answered him, Sir, the gospel of our Lord. We praise to thee, O Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, tell me what you believe in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of his Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with God. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was eternal of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake he was crucified and conscious father. He suffered death in the spirit. On the third day he rose again in the court of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again for to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord of the Lord, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who are the Father and the Son who has spoken through the prophets. I believe one and only Christian and has taught the church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I 
I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. thriller, The Omega Man. U.S. Army Biological Weapons Specialist, Dr. Colonel Robert Neville, believed he was the last uninfected survivor of a global pandemic because he was injected with an experimental vaccine. Everyone else had been transformed into homicidal albinos who were forced to stay out of the sunlight or were young people who contracted the disease as they aged. Those infected hated Dr. Neville as a symbol of the technology that was killing him. And we're trying to hunt him and kill him to destroy everything he represented. That belief about their sickness became a religion. Like many reacting to the coronavirus, Three places in the book of the Revelation. Chapter 1, verse 8. Chapter 
21, verse 6, and chapter 22, verse 13, Jesus identifies himself as the Alpha and Omega. He meant both the everlasting God, but also the first or Alpha man who was immune to and uninfected by sin and last or Omega man to die under the old covenant. Our lessons today are about the pandemic which started death about 6,000 years ago, spread by a piece of fruit. The fruit was okay, but eating it was the sin of rebellion. In Spanish, the word sin means without. In English, sin also means without specifically without access to God, heaven, or eternal life with our Creator. Once Adam and Eve were infected, it spread to the whole family. No mask, social distancing, or vaccination could stop it any more than it seems to help prevent the spread of COVID. We all get infected with sin, which, unlike coronavirus, is 100% fatal. Now there was a cure for sin called the law. If properly ingested, it could have stopped the spread of the infection. But we humans find the law is too bitter a pill to swallow. Some people claim it's worthless and reject it. Others forget to take it or take it improperly, or refuse to use it because the side effects make them feel unnatural. Still more are ashamed into not taking it because of what pop culture says about it or are not allowed by government regulations. Ezekiel, in our Old Testament lesson, pushed using this cure. Through him, God warned Israel to take their medicine and stop sinning. He was to warn them, and if he didn't, he would be just as infected as they were. Not only were they to take their medicine, but God also said they were expected to repair the damage they had done to each other as the infection of sin drove them insane and caused them to attack each other. Paul, in our New Testament lesson, tells us about God's foolproof way of curing the infection of sin. Being washed in the blood of Jesus and vaccinated with the Holy Spirit. But Paul warns that people still needed to do some social distancing. The Corinthians were vulnerable to reinfection unless they socially distanced from pagan temples and the prostitutes there. When Paul wrote sexual immorality, that's what he usually meant. Today we understand this to mean all forms of sexual sin. And even if Paul was being a little more specific, we are wise to apply his warning to avoid the entire gamut of sexual sins because the real danger behind sexual sins back then was the demons associated with the idols. But sex can still be a false god today even without idols. It's still backed by demons and thinking you're immune is the best way to get infected. That's what Paul meant when he wrote, Therefore, let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure. This is true, but we must understand that our obedience is not what saves us. Faith in Jesus is. In our gospel lesson, our Lord explained this relationship between works, sin, salvation, and death. 
He said, do you think that the Galileans murdered by Pilate were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or those 18 on whom the Tower of Siloam fell and killed them, do you think they were worse offenders than all the others who lived in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Jesus is saying that both groups mentioned were killed because of the Jewish insurrection against Rome. We know about the, eight, or the Galileans killed at the altar, but not the 18 killed by a falling tower. Both events seem to have happened at the same time, so we can assume Jesus is pointing out that everyone involved with rebellion deserves the same punishment. We're just as dead, no matter how it happens or what we're doing. The level of sin doesn't matter. We're all equally doomed. Yet we elevate some sins above all others. If I cussed right now, you might chuckle at the slip. But if I didn't show up this morning because I ran away from home with another woman, you would be rightfully on the phone contacting Dr. Wisher to tell him you have a real problem because your pastor is involved in a manifest work of flesh. In the eyes of God, both are grounds for eternal punishment of being separated from him. Jesus says the difference is repentance. If we don't repent of our sins, our souls are sent to hell. And repentance doesn't just mean saying, I'm sorry. That often means we're sorry we got caught, not that we committed a sin. Repentance also means, as God told Ezekiel, trying to make amends. We can do this with each other, but not God. There's no way for us to fix rebellion with God. In Mark 8, 37, Jesus asked, but what can a man give in return for his soul? The fix is found in Mark 8, 34. If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. We want to be with our creator. We must deny our sin nature and get rid of it. That's repentance. And we can only do that through the Holy Spirit. He helps us to start stumbling towards Jesus. Then our Lord does the real work of salvation. None of us would make it without him. Just bounce off the boundaries of the law and get hung up on it. We only make it if he picks us up and carries us. Accepting Christ as our Alpha and Omega is not going to win us any popularity contests. Disobeying and rebellion against him has become what those infected by sin and not infused with the Holy Spirit do. Rebellion, rebellion is their religion. And like those infected albinos in the Omega Man, those protected by the blood of Jesus and injected with the Spirit are heretics to the truth of this world and represent all the world's troubles. It's not your imagination that you seem to see so many people who want to get rid of all Christian references and morals in our society. The type of fruit of the Spirit that God demands of us is as toxic to the world as the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden was to Adam and Eve. On the northern end of our barn, there was an elm tree. It grew to immense proportions in just a few years. Now, my son knows a lot about trees. He said that elm grew so fast because it was surrounded by manure and had more nutrients than it needed. Dutch elm disease finally killed it but not before it spread seeds all around. One of its offspring now grows in the front of the barn, also at an accelerated pace. 
Now, I don't like comparing the word of God to manure. But since Jesus did, I think it's okay. The world already treats the word of God as if we are drowning them in manure while it's spiritually starving to death. Exposure to the word makes us grow and produce the fruit of the spirit unlike those who reject it, die infected with sin, and produce no fruit but when they're gone. At least, no good fruit. In that movie, Dr. Neville's closest friend became infected and betrayed him. He died as a result. But not before he passed along the experimental vaccine to her friends, hoping it would cure her and spare them. Jesus took that type of self-sacrifice one step better. He not only passed along the secret of eternal life before he died, but he also came back to lead us out of the darkness and into his eternal life and light. As long as we're willing to repent of our sins and trust him enough to follow him, we can stand in the light of God. A shot of the Holy Spirit can't make us immune to sin and death in this life but it does in the next life, where we will finally be totally saved from death and sin. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. We say together the offertory. Created me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take it not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation, and lift me up with your Holy Spirit. Amen. And a reminder we gather our offerings at the back of the church as we exit. Abba Father, remember the sick, especially Linda, Rebecca, God and Todd, and those who have suffered the loss of loved ones. Place your loving hands of healing on them and bring wholeness of life. Good Shepherd, help us to follow you. God of grace, help our congregation work to obey your call to go and prepare the way before the coming of Jesus and share the good news with others, inviting them to join us. We pray for those in our surrounding community. Good Shepherd, Help us to follow you. Lord, lead your church throughout the world to follow you in the days of Lent, spreading the good news of your death and resurrection to the whole world, so that all may benefit from the gift of salvation. Good Shepherd, help us to follow you. Prince of Peace, bring your peace to our fallen world in time. Please also look after and protect the people of Ukraine. Good Shepherd, help us to follow you. King of kings, send your spirit upon all leaders of this world so that they may feel compelled to follow your perfect example of humility in serving humankind rather than desiring to be served. Good Shepherd, help us to follow you. God of all good gifts, we thank you for the manifold blessings you have showered on us in the presence of others. Thank you, Lord, for JD's birthday again. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity for the congregations to worship together and share fellowship. Good Shepherd, help us to follow you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper good and healing for us to give thanks to God. It is truly proper good and healing that we should give thanks to God at all times and in all places for salvation through the body and blood of Jesus. Therefore, we join the angelic host praising your holy name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord 
God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take me. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way he took the cup after supper. When he gave him thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this. All of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come to the Lord's table and be satisfied.
Now may the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in this life and in the life to come. You depart this table in peace. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus to suffer and die for us and then to rise for us. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of this meal and making a place for us at your table now and in your kingdom to come. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing us the light of salvation. Amen. Now may the Lord bless and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace.